This video will demonstrate adding CAN communications to Ethernet IP networks via WAGOS 750-658 module. We'll start with a 750-352 Ethernet coupler. We'll add a 750-602 24V DC distribution module, our 750-658 CAN gateway slice, and we'll close it with a 750-600N module. For our CAN simulator, we'll be using an Arduino Uno with a CAN uh, daughter board mounted on top. And to connect all of these, we'll be using WAGO's D sub 9 breakout board. For our Ethernet IP master, we'll be using an Allen Bradley Compact Logix L16 ER processor. And we'll get this all wired up. We'll use a software called Ethernet Settings to set the uh, communication and port parameters of the coupler. We'll log into the coupler by setting up the communication settings. Uh, here we'll be using our USB service cable and we'll read the parameters from the coupler. We'll see that there's no IP address set yet for this so we'll go ahead and set a static IP. Once this is set we'll move over to protocol. We'll disable the Modbus ports and we will enable Ethernet IP. Write those parameters to the coupler. Then we'll log out of this and we'll go into WAGO's I.O. check to set up the module itself. Once we establish communications with I.O. check, we will identify the node and we'll see all the modules on here. We just have the 658, so we'll right click there and we'll go to settings. In the top left drop down menu, these are the master settings for the for the module itself. We'll go to configuration and see we have up to 48 bytes that we can map for the process image. We're going to leave this at 12 bytes, uh, which is default. Save those parameters, then move to the CAN tab to set up the baud rate and the header size. We're going to use a 29-bit header here, although we could use an 11-bit header if we prefer. We have a few modes that we can work with in this module, sniffer mode, transparent mode, but in this uh, demonstration we'll be using mapped mode. And this will map uh, input and output data to the process image. On the input side, we're going to go ahead and set up um, CAN ID 202. This will be looking for a header 202, and it will move that the data located under that header to the process image. Um, you can see our available locations are shown in white, and we'll map in um, five bytes starting at um, byte location 7. We'll do the same with the output data. Um, in this case, we'll be giving it a CAN ID, uh, which it will write these, um, these data points to. We'll be using 121. Uh, we'll also map five bytes. We unfix these values, and similar to the input, we map them to the output. We have a few different ways we can send. Um, we can send on change. We can send with a toggle byte, and that's, uh, or a toggle bit. That's what we'll do in this case. Once we write those map locations to the module, we will uh, also select retentive saving and we will log out of the module. Next we're going to go into RS Logix and we're going to do the programming side for the Allen Bradley controller. So in RS Logix we'll create a new project and we're going to call this project uh, WAGO CAN Gateway. Click through our settings and get going. The very first thing we'll do in our project is we're going to add our WAGO Remote I.O. node uh, to, the, to the network. We'll right click Ethernet, New Module, Generic Ethernet Module, and we'll put our parameters in here. We'll call this WAGO RIO. We'll change the format to Sint, add our IP address, and add our data size under the proper assembly instance, uh, 107 and 101, 12 bytes for both. We'll add this. Next, we'll um, in import our add-on instruction. Right-click, add-on, select import, and we'll grab the .l5x file for the appropriate process image size, um, 12 bytes in this case. Now, moving to our main routine, uh, there are really three steps here. We copy data into the function block, we copy data out of the function block, and we add tax to the function block itself. So we'll create two uh, rungs with copy function blocks. We'll add our function block out of our um, add-on instruction and we'll create the tags inside. Create an instance of the function block itself. 
uh, the input data, the output data, uh, the CAN data, both for the input and output side as well. And once we've entered those, we'll just right-click each of them and create new tags for, for all of these uh, new values that we've entered. Once we've created those tags, uh, we will move to the copy function blocks. So for the um, input copy function block, we'll, we'll go ahead and select for the source, the WAGO uh, RIO in data zero. Uh, we'll copy that into the function blocks in data zero and at a length of 12 bytes. We'll do the same thing in reverse um, for the copy out data. However, um, we'll copy the source for the output will be the function blocks out data and the destination will be the WAGO remote IO output data zero at 12 bytes. We'll download this to the PLC and um, you can see we have established good communications, error free, and we'll move into changing these values. So our Arduino program is very simple. We're taking the data that it's reading and we're copying it over to its own output data. So it's, it's reading um, CAN header 121 and it is writing that data to CAN ID 202. Uh, which is where we've mapped our data. So if we monitor the Arduino project, uh, we can see that we're getting good communication coming in uh, with the bytes that we have told it to send. And it's turning those bytes around and sending them back uh, under the different CAN header. Hope you enjoyed this video.